Are you tired of using ineffective methods like rereading, highlighting, and summarizing for revising? If yes, then it's time to switch to more efficient and effective study techniques. In my experience, one of the most effective study methods is active recall. And in this video in the evidence-based learning series, I'm gonna cover my five-step active recall method that will make your studying more efficient, effective, and rewarding. I'm gonna dive into how to practically implement this five-step active recall technique, regardless of your subject, and ways to stay motivated when using active recall. So hit that subscribe button and let's dive right in. Most of the time, we think that how we learn is a process where you test yourself after you've learned everything. It seems silly to do anything else, right? In fact, this couldn't be more far from the truth. Active recall is a way to get information out of your memory by testing yourself at each step of the studying process. The act of retrieving information and data from our brains not only makes it easier for us to remember things, but it also makes it easier for our brains to make new connections between different ideas. Active recall is closely connected to other evidence-based study methods, including interleaving and spacing, and the process of active recall is part of how our brains remember information together with things like encoding and storage, so it's pretty integral to how we learn. A 2013 study that looked at hundreds of different studies about effective ways to study and learn found that active recall, also known as the testing effect, is a method that has high utility and can be used well with little training. Based on the evidence, we think that practice tests are very useful. Testing effects have been shown in a wide range of practice test formats, types of material, learner ages, outcome measures, and retention intervals. So practice testing as a learning process has a wide range of uses. The scientific literature from 1939 and 2010 are also strong evidence that active recall is a high yield learning technique and is superior to passive study methods. But Karpik and Blunt's 2011 paper published in Science is probably the best evidence of the effectiveness of active studying. In the study, researchers placed students into four groups and gave each group the same material to learn. Then each group was tested on what they had learned, but each group was given different rules and instructions for how to actually learn the information provided. The material would only be read once by the first group, the second group had to read the information four times, the third group was told to read the information and then draw a mind map, and the fourth group would only read the information once and then try to remember as much of it as they could. In the verbatim test afterwards, where people were asked to remember facts, and the interference test where people were asked to remember ideas, the active group did much better than the other groups combined. This study showed that taking a test just once is better than going over a chapter four times if you're using ineffective methods. I'm sure we've all reread something at some point, but just by testing ourselves once, you could make your studies much more effective and efficient. And this is such a simple method, but it's got so many clear benefits and it would be silly not to use it. Maybe we don't like to use active recall because it's harder and takes more brain power than rereading, but the most important thing is actually that your review should be hard on your brain. You can think of this like going to the gym. If you lift light weights, you're probably not gonna make much process to bulking up. But if you lift heavier weights that challenge your strength, you're more likely to build muscle faster. And the same is true for building up the muscle of our brain. The harder we have to work at something, Think, the better our brains will be at remembering it and storing it in the future. So how can we actually use active recall strategies in our own study routines? Well, first of all, almost anything we do that makes us think and use our brains to remember things is gonna help us. But more specifically, I use a number of strategies and here are five that I found super helpful. First up, if you can't seem to break that habit of taking notes, I found that taking notes with the book closed helped a ton. Instead of just copying from the textbook verbatim, try to learn about a new topic and then write down how you would explain the most important points and ideas in your own words with the book closed. Once you've written down everything you can remember, open the book back up and fill in the parts that you couldn't remember. This uses elements of the Feynman technique and forces you to write concisely in your own language. In terms of the learning science here, when we're forced to think independently rather than just looking at content in a book and trying to remember it, we're better encoding that information as our brains are linking it to our existing knowledge and packaging it up for more effective storage. Now, even though there's evidence that taking notes isn't the best way to study, it still just feels like a good idea to write things down, right? It kind of makes sense to note things down so we don't forget it. But actually, for studying, most of the information is already out there in a textbook or online, and so you end up duplicating information or just writing down verbatim from a textbook. A better way that employs active recall is to write down your own questions as you go through content that you're learning. This method is similar to the Cornell note-taking method, which is when you write questions for yourself based on the information in the syllabus. The main idea 
idea here is that instead of passively rereading or highlighting the information, as we're often tempted to do, we're forced to actively engage in cognitive effort to retrieve the information in order to answer the questions. This strengthens connections between information in our brains and improves our ability to remember that information when the exam comes around. If we look back at Bloom's taxonomy, which is a hierarchy of effective learning techniques, the highest order methods of learning are evaluating and creating new content. By creating our own questions that challenge us to evaluate or explain concepts, we're actively forcing ourselves to dive deeper and deeper and get a better understanding of the content that we're learning, rather than just writing down the information as we tend to do when learning passively. Now, even easier than writing closed book notes or creating questions is self-questioning. This can be done anywhere at any time without any tools. You simply need to choose a topic and then think about how much of that topic you can talk about right now. There's no complexity here at all. You're just thinking, what am I not sure about when it comes to this topic? What's the extent of my knowledge? What does X mean? What does Y mean? You're essentially examining your existing knowledge and pulling on strings to identify where your limits of understanding are. You can then head back to the books and read around the areas you're not confident about to build up that knowledge. Self-questioning is also important as it allows for reflection and identification of gaps in your knowledge which then become more relevant when you encounter them and so your brain pays much more attention to them. There are lots of great digital resources that use practice testing to force you to learn actively, but in a fun and enjoyable way. Flashcard apps like Anki have huge volumes of cards that you can immediately dive into to test your knowledge against. Apps like Duolingo or Shikan use higher order questions to get you to analyze and use your knowledge across a variety of different question types. You can incorporate active recall as a key study method when using practice testing in question banks without really needing to plan anything out. If you're studying for an exam, the best question format to practice with is that which most closely resembles the format of your final exam questions. For me, question banks were always the most time effective way to use retrieval practice to prepare for exams around my day job and they helped me to get top grades every single time. And finally, teaching others is a great way to use active recall. Teaching others puts you on the spot and challenges you to pull out information and convey it in a way that's easy for people to understand. It's also a much more social way to study and a diversity of opinions can often help to bring together new understanding around tricky topics. In terms of practically using these five techniques, it's actually pretty easy. But switching from passive learning to active learning for an actual exam is a habit change and it can feel quite uncomfortable. When I was studying for my postgraduate surgical exams to help me remember the huge volume of medical content in the shortest time possible, I developed a five-step specific process. At the start of any study session, before I opened any books or apps, I would first prime my knowledge by drawing out a spider diagram or jotting down some bullet points for the topic I was studying. I'd try to remember as much as I could, and then I'd go back to my books or Google and fill in any missing information. This forces me to pull out information from my brain and self-test and prime my knowledge for the forthcoming study session. When I then went into my books or Google, I would identify any concepts I was struggling with or which I couldn't remember in step one and turn these into study notes. This might be as simple as explain topic X or something more specific like what does Y do? Now, although I've included it here as step three, I actually use self-questioning throughout steps one and two when assessing what I knew and what I didn't. I'd also use self-questioning when in the shower or on my way into work to think about any hard topics that I'd created, so I was always testing myself. For medical finals and surgical exams, I signed up to question banks that I could use on my iPhone. If I'm learning a language, I'll use Duolingo. Question banks are important as they provide questions that you may not have thought to self-test on and they also provide explanations which saves you a ton of time. The best apps and websites allow you to quickly get through lots and lots of practice questions that test your application of knowledge, which is a higher order analytical ability rather than just memorizing skills and it's at a desirable difficulty relevant to your exam. Finally, as I lived with medics after an evening of studying, we'd all try and summarize what we'd learned in our study sessions that day. This aids effective encoding by packaging information together and summarizing back what we've learned. Now that five-step process got me through lots of exams and got me top grades every time. But because self-testing is an active cognitive process, it takes more energy and it can be easy to become tired and lose motivation, especially if you're answering lots and lots of questions. To stay productive and motivating when using active study methods, I made sure I got sufficient sleep and took breaks to go to the gym and to eat healthily around study sessions. A really good tip here is to make sure you stock up on water and healthy snacks like nuts, berries and dry fruit, which have been shown to help improve cognitive function and focus. Now, I've got some great videos at looking at encoding and active recall and other methods of effective studying in my evidence-based learning series, which I'll put up here. Thanks so much for watching and for subscribing, and I'll catch you again in the next video.